Good afternoon, everyone. This is Anthony Chima on the Power, Purpose, and Passion podcast with my friend and spiritual friend and uh, an amazing human being, Cameron. And thank you for joining us today. It is an absolute honor and privilege and uh, to be here with you on this Facebook feed, on this live video feed and wherever you are in the world and uh, nothing but divine love for you and compassion. Uh, I'm doing this because I just, this is the next level of my service to the world and making the world a bit better each and every single day by helping people claim their power, clarify their purpose and cultivate their passions in life in all the areas of their life, whether it be relationships, spirituality, money, uh, health, what, whatever it might be, you were wanting to enhance, wanting to upgrade. And I'm just, I'm just here to serve you, the audience, whether it be one person or 1,000 or a million, it really doesn't matter. I'm all about creating depth in people's lives and making the most of people's lives, living one moment at a time and appreciating life at the utmost and most powerful ways. So thank you for joining us. Thank you, Cam, for helping me out on the technical side because that's, that's an area that I'm not very good at. Uh, I'm more good at talking, speaking, inspiring, and loving people uh, live. <laughs> so thank you for helping me out there, Cam. Yeah, I got you. I got you. So today uh, we actually got into sort of an already like quick rant before we pressed record here. Yeah. And that was about purpose. So I figured let's talk about that because yeah. like you said earlier, you said when you're on purpose, when you're like following that path that you just feel fired up about, um, there's no room for fear. There's no room for any of these negative emotions and you I think sort of realize how small these emotions really are how little these problems really are when you're living um, from your purpose so with that in mind where do you start if, if, if I mean <laughs> even if you know your purpose where do you start what do you do because there are still things in life that keep us from fulfilling our purpose I know yes, like if yes. your purpose is to be an artist you still got to pay your bills you still got to work and do all these things and you know when yeah. you get home you're not really motivated you're all exhausted and stuff right so like um and, and then even then if you're a songwriter you might be having like a, a writer's block or something like that or you might not have the right connections with people and you just get discouraged or whatever like yeah let's just dive right into purpose well you know you're a big fan of Wayne Dyer and I was a huge fan of Wayne Dyer I consider him a friend uh, in many ways, like a father. <laughs> and he used to always quote Patanjali's famous quote, when you're inspired by some great project, some extraordinary vision, all thoughts break their bonds. Your, man, your mind transcends limitations and your consciousness expands in every direction. Uh, and you find yourself a new, great and wonderful world. And he, then he said this, uh, dormant forces, faculties and talents come alive and you discover yourself to be a greater person by far than you ever dreamed yourself to be. And when you're inspired by some great purpose, whether it be a social change, will it be creating uh, a new device, whether it be uh, creating a new business, whether it be creating a new relationship, whether it be connecting with the divine, whatever, whatever purpose you're on. And we were talking about this before we went on live. You were talking about how your purpose is music and it's, it's, it literally lives in your body. Like when you feel it in your body, you feel it with every part of your, 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 every fiber of your being, every nerve in your body, every cell is just vibrating with that purpose. And when you are in presence with that purpose, because literally purpose lives in your body, it lives in your body as, as a sensation. You can't describe it. It's almost ineffable. And when you're on purpose, when you're inspired by some project, by extraordinary vision or some passion that you are, are something very passionate about, literally it, it's like almost... It's almost like the universe aligns. There's no fear. And you were talking about this. You know, the inner cynic comes up. The ego says, well, you should be doing something else. You were just writing a song and you're going to send me that song, of course. And you were saying, as soon as I was finished, as soon as I was out of purpose, the ego, the inner cynic stepped in and he said, whatever he or she said to you said, oh, you should be doing more. This is stupid or whatever it might be. Right. But the reality is is when you're in that mode of playing the guitar or writing music or writing your poem or composing that that play you were meant to compose or opening that that daycare or whatever it is you're, you're wanting to do or moving to Africa. I mean, I have a cousin that moved literally to Africa, South Africa with her husband, quit her job, lives uh, in uh, California, quit her job, adopted five children, now has like a little... Um, uh, a ministry or a little uh, for a shelter that she's done for 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 uh, for 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 kids or babies that 
um, that, that can't find a home, or I think it was women that have been raped and then that they have had babies and they can't take care of them. So they bring them to the shelter and they take care of these, these babies. That's her purpose. She literally got up and left and just lived her, her dream, her purpose, serving, serving God, serving the, the divine and, and whatever vehicle she used. And when you are feeling that, and when you are owning that, um, it is a very powerful thing. And, and you talk about how do you, how do you actually get to that purpose? Well, o- oftentimes people ask me, um, how, how do I, how do I find my purpose? Well, then here's the thing I have to say, all right, if you haven't found your purpose, make discovering your purpose, your purpose that, that, that becomes your purpose. You know, when people ask me about prayer and they're saying to me, oh, how do I pray? How do I meditate? I don't know the purpose behind it. That then becomes your prayer, your frustration with meditation, your frustration with prayer. that actually becomes your prayer. You go, I can't do this. It's hard. Or I can't find my purpose. I need some guidance. And there's going to be some times when you're going to feel like the universe, God, or Allah is left you and you don't feel like you have any hope or meaning left in your life. And that's particular time. Sometimes you got to step away, but make discovering your purpose, your purpose. And here, here's a little idea. Two things. Number one, what are you really good at? What are you so good at naturally that when some, someone looks at you, when you're doing that thing that you're good at, they go, wow, you're really good at that. And you go, well, it's, it comes naturally to me, but it's not that big a deal. Well, that's, that's a good, that's a good little secret to look at the things that you're really good at. Like I'm good at sports. I'm good at music. I'm good at a lot, a lot, a lot of things, but in those little subtle talents, we can find deep meanings and being present with those talents, being present with those moments of, wow, appreciating our talents, appreciating our genius, our genius, appreciating our passions. And then, and then fr- from the moment, moment by moment, you nurture those talents, you make them better, you sharpen them, you make them better. You practice deliberately every single day to make those talents better. Now, does that mean it's going to be joyful without frustration? No, you know this. That can when you first start playing guitar, what happens to your fingers? They bleed, right? Because they're not used to it, and so you're going to get some pain. So that's part of the process. That's part of that's part of the the sacrifice. That's part of the commitment that you're going to go through some pain uh, in the process of discovering your purpose, living out your purpose, and finally. Um, getting to the ultimate end, if there is anything like that, an ultimate end, but every day I'm living my purpose and uh, that is my objective. I just went on a tangent. <laughs> there hey, I that's go again. okay. No, that's what this <laughs> podcast is about. It's about tangents. So, uh, no, that's great. And I do recognize that, that, uh, that theme of like taking an extra step back and that's like the solution to most problems, right? Like, um, when you're meditating, when you think about meditating, when you when you when you're trying to be present and you think about being present, you're no longer present. So yes, you have to take yes. another step back, and then you also just think about thinking about it, and then another yes. step back. I think it about thinking about it. Yeah, yeah and it. then and then meditation just becomes this game of like stepping back the entire time, and uh, <clears throat> I think that yeah, that's what you said with purpose. If you can't find your purpose, make finding it your purpose. Because yes. I think at all moments of every uh, yeah, like every moment of your life, there's constantly. Uh, there's constantly a purpose somewhere. Yeah. There's constantly. Well, you, yeah, yeah, there's always. And you know what? The second thing I didn't, I didn't clarify the second thing I was going to say, make sure your purpose is about service, serving the greater good. And you know, one of Wayne Dyer's famous mantras or affirmations that I use is how may I serve? Not what's in it for me, but how can I serve the greater good? How can I serve this person right here? You know, there's a spiritual teacher that talks about how the greatest moment of your, of your life is this moment now. The greatest person and most important person in, in your life is the person you're with right now. The most important time of your life is this moment right here. So it's it's also combining, okay, how can I be discover my purpose, live out my purpose, and be present with what is in this moment? And whether it be, you know, for my coaching practice, well, one-on-one coaching, whether it be speaking in front of an audience, or listen, I just played for a funeral. Uh, I just finished a funeral. I played and sing for a funeral for a 23 year old, 23 year old man, young man. And I sang and gave my all to that, to that, to that congregation so that I could, I could provide that healing for people. That's emotional release for people. Not because I'm better than anybody, because that's part of my purpose is to sing. I, I've been given this great gift of talent of singing and playing the piano, and I'm going to give it away as much as I can. And you know, uh, that's, that's who I am and that's how I'm going to live out my life. And so if you notice too, when you're on purpose, when you're present, when you're present with your purpose, fear dissipates. And when you're focusing on not just purpose and, and, 
and uh, presence, but serving the greater good, all of a sudden, your ego, your inner cynic, the fear, it literally dissolves in the presence of your purpose, in the presence of being present with your purpose and serving the greater good. There are times when I was speaking in front of audiences or I'm one-on-one coaching or I'm singing in front of an audience or whatever it might be, and I wasn't feeling well and I was sick and I was just, I had a fever or whatever it might be. And the moment I, 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 I changed, I shifted my focus from, oh, I'm, I'm feeling sick to these people are, I'm here to serve these people. I'm going to step up and serve these people. All of a sudden, the sickness dissipated for that hour, hour and a half, whatever it might be. I gained this health and vitality that was dormant, that was always there. But all of a sudden, I, I took it off of me and onto sharing with others. And then it was gone. But after the 90 minutes were up, all of a sudden, it returned because I was, again, focusing on myself. So focus on purpose, being present with your purpose, and on service. Those three things are, are so, so, you got to get really associated with that, with that level of purpose, the presence, and the serving the greater good, using your gifts and talents to make the world better, make the people around you better. I have a question about uh, purpose. One more question here. Well, I'm probably going to have so many questions, but um, what if your purpose is something that uh, that doesn't seem to help anybody? Or, or it doesn't seem to like have that much impact because there's some people who, you know, their honest purpose would be to, uh, as an example, play video games or something, right? Okay. They just want to, okay. they, they want to play video games yep. and, uh, they want to maybe like make videos of it or, uh, something like that for the internet. Mm -hmm. Um, how, how would you deal with, like, w how do you kind of put your play, like yourself in a place of service when you're purpose has like something you're so passionate about mm -hmm. for some mm -hmm. reason doesn't seem to help anybody or really like change much you know well let, let's look at it deeper i mean if you're if you're in video game design or you're or you're good at playing video games you're making that becomes your career because i know some people that go to these online tournaments and make money off it and that's okay too you are at some level from an economic point of view you're serving the economy because you're creating you're, you're part of the economic engine and um, we can get into uh, the moral ethical things about, you know, violent video games and everything. But the, but the, I think the point was, is how do you, what you were asking me is how do you get, how do you get aligned with a purpose when you don't feel like you're making an impact at the end of the day, there are times, whether I'm speaking in front of an audience or I'm one-on-one -on -one with someone, what I do is I make whatever activity I'm engaged, I am engaged in purposefully. You get what I'm saying? I do it purposefully. So purposefully, sorry. And I'm present, with, whether it be drinking tea. I mean, the Japanese have this uh, this tea ceremony called Chanyu. And they they, they they take these people through these, these really slow, present moment uh, ceremonies, of a tea ceremony. And they get really into it to the point where they can like, they can do the ceremony without any cups or tea and they can almost envision the tea in front of them. They're so present. They do that action of serving tea to people, total presence, total purpose, and they're fully engaged in that moment. So at the end of the day, it's it's not, I mean, everyone has a different level of purpose. I mean, if you look at a guy like Tony Robbins or, you know, if you look at people like Jesus Christ or Gandhi, we're, I mean, comparing ourselves to comparing ourselves to those guys is probably not a good idea because we're going to feel inferior to those guys. But we can also shift our focus from, oh my gosh, they're better than us to, wow, those people are inspiring me to do something. Whatever instrument, whatever vehicle I'm using, whatever career I'm doing. I mean, I remember hearing one guy talk about how at his church, you know, um, they brought up these two people who, and they commissioned them up there and they, they were clapping for them because they were going to Africa to run a missionary down there. And everyone's clapping new level of human being. Right. But then what about the accountant that's at work? That's sitting in the audience going, wow, that's a new level of human being. And they're comparing themselves to these two people that are going to Africa, giving up their lives to go to Africa. Well, the truth of the matter is the accountant has a purpose too. They create order out of chaos for people. That That's very purposeful. That's Number crunching may not be fun to, for some people, but I actually know people that, who are accountants that love their job. They do it with purpose. They love do it. They love tax time. I hate tax time, but you know, a, a lot of people love tax time. They get to crunch numbers and figure out where you could, you know, little little loopholes or whatever it might be, and they just they just love it and they do it purposely. So wh whatever your calling it might be, if it brings you joy, and here at the, at the end of the day, there, Cameron, if a person's 
you know, uh, playing video games and they're inspiring other kids to become, you know, video game creators or the best video game player online so they can make a career out of it. They're being inspired by these people. So that, that then becomes a purpose too, right? Right. At, at the end of the day, I mean, let, let's look at it. Video games are now, I think the stati statistics are video games are now have now surpassed Hollywood and it is, there are people that are sponsored by Red Bull, you know, by all these crazy things, these teams of Call of Duty guys, whether I endorse it or not, it's just the point is, is that it, it, these people, it, it's, it's here to stay and there's tournaments. It's, it's, it's bigger than ESPN at some level, right? It's actually esports now. And it's not that there's nothing wrong with it. I, I don't think that there's anything wrong with it. It's how we go about uh, using our talents to make the world better. I think that that's just my opinion. Absolutely. No, I love I love that because uh, there is always something to give in everything that you do, right? Yeah. Um, and even if it's playing video games or whatever, because that's entertainment, right? Just like yeah. how somebody would be an actor and, yeah. you know, yeah, yeah, that does, yeah, it's yeah. entertainment, like whatever. Yes. I love yes. that. I love that. And also, I feel like you can um, you can play video games, gather influence as a player or as whatever. This is just the example, right? But you can gather influence in whatever you do, whether it be sitting sure. on the street meditating sure. or playing sure. or like whatever. Um, and once you have that influence, you can help others, right? Like Jim Carrey, as an example, became one of the biggest actor comedians yes. in his time and then started talking about spirituality and trying to help yeah. people. And like you listen because it's Jim Carrey. <laughs> like yes, you've got, yes, you have that influence, right? Yeah, so, yeah. no, I love that. We also have a comment from Len Erickson yeah. saying... Being available and willing to do whatever you're good at for the benefit of others is a good start. Do it and oh, they yes. will come. A, a hundred percent there, Len. I, I absolutely agree with that. Um, I, I think we, one of the things we haven't talked about is, is taking action. <laughs> you gotta, you can't sit there and meditate all day long and go and hope things are going to happen. You have to take action that, that, and, and do it with purpose. And you know, the reality is too there, Cam, you know, we talk about video games. There's a book I read a while ago that was given to me by my best friend and it was called super better. And it was written by a, a woman. I think her name is Jane, McG Jane McGonigal. Anyway, she wrote the book and she got a PhD and she wrote her, I think her, her thesis on the benefits of video games and she, how you can relate video games to your life. So as an example, um, let's take a game like Zelda. Have you played Zelda before or anything like that? Oh, absolutely. Okay, Zelda, one of the most popular games on Nintendo. If you look at it, Matt, you're your own hero in your story, right? So you're Link going on this crazy quest and you're and you're 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 getting all these upgrades and you're getting all these power-ups and you're getting all you're you're making these alliances, and then you got each level, you got a boss. So in your life, you're your own hero. You're making friends and alliances. You're getting power-ups. Just watching this podcast might be one of your power-ups. You might get an insight and you go, aha, that's going to help me take, get to the next level so I can prepare for the next boss of that level, which would be a challenge, whether it be an internal challenge or, or a person in your life that might go, yeah, you're not going to make it. Um, you're too stupid to open your own business. You don't have uh, the education. You're too short. You're too small. You're too old. You're too fat, whatever it might be. And you conquer that. And then you get to the next level, which creates a stronger sense of certainty. And then along the way, so I'm, I oftentimes in my coaching practice with my young people that I coach, I use video games as a metaphor. And I ask them, what video game do you like to play? And they go, well, I like to play Super Mario. Well, well, Okay, so you're Super Mario in your game, and each level gets harder. And you're getting these power ups, you're getting all these alliances, you're learning these new skills, so then you can get prepared for the next challenge or boss that you uh, you got to defeat. And could you imagine there, Cam, that on the first level of your video game, you're just starting, and you go right to the biggest boss, <laughs> you're gonna lose immediately. You have to gain those 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 power ups and those skills to finally get to the boss at the very end of the video game, in order to def defeat that boss. So life is much like the same thing. We got to start some way, take little action, find the people around us to associate that will be on our 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 winning team, the, our dream team, like I like to call it. And you get people around you that are going to support you in your dream. You take action each day, consistently each day. You commit to it, and even when you fail, and you will fail. Okay. Life, your life is a series of failures. You know, as a, a coach said to me a long time, a long time ago, Anthony success is, you know, falling down 10 times and getting up 11. It's, it's getting up. It's whether you're going to get up, learn from that mistake and then move on from it. 
It's that sense of, okay, I'm here to learn some, something that's serving me, that failure served me. There's a lesson in there. I'm here to move forward. So, I mean, again, uh, another way to look at video games in a positive way. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I love that analogy. Leanne commented, she said, love the video game analogy. So <laughs> she also asked a question because I was talking about um, no matter what you do, you could build influence doing it. And then later on in your life, when you've learned a lot, you can teach others. Um, yes. maybe how you did that or how they could, you know, sort of that's just getting influence is a very important thing for sure. 100%. When it comes to impacting other people. 100%. Um, and she asked the question, how do you recommend people build their influence? Build their influence. Well, be a source of influence, right? And, um, oftentimes I say to people, you know, leadership isn't about leading other people first. you the first law of leadership is leading yourself. Are you not only teaching the wisdom that you're wanting to express in whatever path you're on, are you living it each day? Are you a living embodiment of that wisdom? Um, as, as I hear Gandhi say, be the change you wish to see in the world. Gandhi knew that the end was inherent in the means, that you first had to be before you could do and do before you could have. So you must be that source of love. Don't look for love, be the source of love. Don't look for inspiration, be the source of inspiration. And and daily, have a daily practice where you're 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 connecting with yourself, connecting with the divine, whatever you you know, your your relationship with and your own definition of the divine might be. You could be atheist, it really doesn't matter. You can just connect with yourself and make every moment as much as you can purposefully be present with that even drinking water just drink the water slowly and go ah oh, and notice that the water is going into your body nourishing your body i mean there's a i just recently listened to a zen story and the zen master for i think 30 years he raised his purpose was raising a water buffalo <laughs> can you imagine raising a water buffalo for 30 years but every day he nourished that buffalo he, he loved that Buffalo. He was present with that Buffalo and that was his purpose. That was, he was present with that actual action each day, present with it, present with it, present with it, present with it. And, you know, for me now I I'm at a stage in my life where, you know, success, I love, I, I love the ideas of success, success principles and strategies. And I still, I still align myself with those things, but I'm all about living deeper with meaning, with love, with compassion, uh, with with appreciating what's around me, and you talk about you know living a, a, a person of influence. Well, learn to be the best you can be by be by showing up, by by getting up early, staying late, reading as much as you can. I mean, a, a coach said to me a long time ago, Anthony, where you will be in in two years will depend on four things: what you read, what you listen to, what you watch, and who you hang around. Watch those four things. Because they will, they will, they will greatly enhance or keep you back from your destiny. You got to be very careful with those things. So I'm reading certain books. A uh, uh, certain book that I'm reading right now. Uh, I'll just show it to you here. Gretchen Rubin's The Four Tendencies. Sorry, I'm lifting up my computer here to show you. <laughs> it's, so I'm reading books like this every day. It's a great book on the four tendencies. And I'm listening to audio, spiritual audio, success principles, anything to feed my mind. Uh, the right. Uh, tool, the right words. Um, I'm watching videos on inspirational people, um, hang around good people, hang around people that are better than me and constantly feeding my mind because garbage in garbage out good in good out. So be very careful what goes in your ear, who you're hanging around, what you're watching and what you're, what you're listening to and what you're watching. Awesome. Awesome. I think also, um, when it comes to building influence, um, I don't have that much influence, obviously, like it's widespread, but I have been able to help others and like change the way they think or I even change their diet because I'm vegan. I've been vegan for three yeah. years and um, just by hanging around with people and not even talking about it that much, I've influenced them to like look into it and, you know, change their habits or whatever. And I think it's an amount of just being honest and being like yourself because a lot of people, they, they put a filter on and they don't... Uh, they kind of like, they're like chameleons, right? They like put on a skin because they're with this person and they want to kind of mirror them so that they can be sure. accepted. Sure. But I think the most important thing when it comes to just influencing, even on a small scale is, uh, be yourself. Don't be afraid yes. to like yes. say no to things or, um, you know, if, 
yeah, just just be yourself. And I really think that uh, other people they'll look at you and they won't. Because I mean, if you're like everybody else, or you try to be like everybody else that you're around, they won't look at you twice. They'll look at yes. you. They'll be like, okay, yep, that's uh, I, yeah. cool. Next. Yeah. Well, but you know what the different, thing is, right? Wait, it's yeah. like, oh yeah, for yeah. sure. Uh, there's a quote that says, when you don't show up as who you are, people fall in love with who you're not. Right. So I think you, I think the one thing you described there, let, let's talk about that because I think the one word that you're looking for is authenticity. People that are authentic, that show up with a deep caring uh, in my coaching practice. One of the first lessons I learned in, in, in helping people was the first law of coaching. And, and they teach us in therapy too, is you got to develop that rapport with somebody that true caring, that relationship with that person. People don't care how much you know until they, they know how much you care. So you got to develop that genuine, honest, sincere love for people without judgment. And once you have that relationship and rapport, people will listen to you. When they know, they'll let their guard down. Oftentimes in my coaching practice, my first code of conduct is developing that deep relationship, that deep caring, making that connection at the deepest level possible so that they're able to kind of put pull down the shade a bit and could say, all right, I'm, I'm going to open up to this person. I'm going to be vulnerable in front of this person uh, because I, I deeply believe this person really cares for me and my, and my deepest needs. And before you know it, we're creating transformation in that moment because that person's able to trust me to, to know at a deep level that I care for them. So you make a, an amazing point, a point greater than my point because you're right. Authenticity, g- being genuinely uh, honest uh, with who you are. Um, I often say to people, you know, people don't like to talk about their failures. People like to talk about their successes, but I've, I've found in my coaching practices and in, in, with my family, with my wife, with every, all my friends, when I admit that I'm having a tough time, when I admit that I just, I failed or I admit I am having a bad day or uh, I don't feel that good today. People are like, wow, he's human. <laughs> and they, they, they actually have a deeper level of respect for me. They're saying, wow, Anthony, I, I, I thought you were this superhuman guy, but no, I'm not. I just, I'm just a love bug. I just have a ton of energy wanting to care for people, love people, uh, and see what's possible in their life. And, um, when you show up as who you are, people love, uh, people trust you. They want to be around you. They want something that, cause when you're inspired by somebody, by something or somebody, what, what it really means is you, they have something you want that you want, right? You're like, wow, I, I want to be like that. Right. And it's genuine. It's honest. It's, they articulate it in a certain way. They conduct themselves in a certain way. I think the greatest compliment anyone's ever said to me was, Anthony, part of the reason why uh, I want to work with you is because I, I looked at you, I saw you speak, and I saw that you were genuine in your wanting to help people. And I was like, that was the greatest compliment anyone's ever paid to me, if I get any. <laughs> right. So, um, but yeah, I just, I, just I, I think that's very, very important. Awesome. So we touched on purpose. We touched on influence we touched on that video game analogy of Mm -hmm. realizing that um i mean video games are basically just a list of like quests of of adventures of tasks of things that you need to complete right and there's a lot of challenges and if there were no challenges the video game would be boring and that's what makes this life really exciting so um and when it comes to if you don't think you're making an impact with your purpose think again (laughs) because you are and you have to just take an extra look at that um is there anything else you'd like to touch upon when it comes to purpose? Well, you know what? Um, I think we've talked about having a great vision and great purpose. But as I said, maybe your purpose in this moment is just to be with a child, be with your child or be with your best friend. The other day I was just with my children. I was lying down with them in bed and I was just like, this is my, this, right now I'm present with my kids, just laughing, talking with them. And just snuggling up with my kids, I often tell people, and this is no lie. I'm, I, I, this is God honest truth. My favorite part of my day is when I've completed my day, and I'm tucking my kids in bed, and my son or my daughter says to me, "Dad, can you snuggle?" And I'm like, "Oh yes!" And it's like the best. And I just lay down with them, fully present, no agenda, uh, totally with them in the moment, laughing, playing, um, just there, and. Uh, as I said, there's no work to be done. It's two people connecting at the deepest level without any thought of future, of past, fully in the moment. And I, I that is the best part of my day. Uh, you know, there are great parts of my day when I'm helping a lot of people, but at the end of the day, just be present with, with the next time you're drinking coffee or drinking tea or you're working out, 
just be present with it. Just, just sit in awareness of in awe of this present moment. Like it, I was by the spiritual teacher asked me a long time ago. It, it, I actually use it in some of my seminars and in my coaching practices. They, uh, he asked me, Anthony, what, what would happen if you had six months left to live? What would you do? And I thought about it. I went, okay. Uh, and I, I couldn't really come up with an answer because my mind just went crazy and, and I was racing. And he said, what about, what about six weeks left to live? And I was like, wow, six weeks left to live. And then he goes, six days left to live. And I just went, whoa. And he said, how important is that, you know, that, that flat tire, <laughs> how important is that you lost a client or how important is that, you know, someone made fun of you online. And he said, six minutes left to live. And I went, he goes, the truth is, the truth is we don't know when we're going to expire. We're basically candles and a wind, a wind can come, go by and snuff out our candle, our light at any moment in time. And so oftentimes what I do is to kind of cultivate that present moment action, purposeful action. Uh, I'll often, and this might sound cynical, but one at times what I'll do is I'll grab my kid's face. I'll close my eyes and I'll say to myself silently, and I'll say, well, what if this was the last time I saw my daughter or I saw my wife, or this is the last time I was going to be working out? Would my child know that I love them at the level that I want them to know? Do they know that at, at their gut and the core? And it brings me fully into the present moment. I take a deep breath and I'm fully in the moment with no thought of present or past or pre uh, future or how bad my, how my agenda or how busy my day is, fully present. And, and fear dissipates. I die to all that because I know um, in the end, uh, I have faith that love is the, is the great, in the end, love is all there's going to be. And fear dissolves in the presence of that. So um, hopefully that answers your question and I'm able to uh, clarify what purpose, how powerful purpose is. And, and uh, hopefully everyone can learn something from this podcast. Absolutely. That was, that's a good way to close it off. We did get one more question, but I think that's yeah. what our next episode is going to be about. Mm -hmm. um, building that vision. Um, and that's all about manifestation and, and yes. achieving your goals and getting closer and closer oh, to that ideal life. Sure. So we'll get, we'll yeah. dive right into that next week. Uh, make sure to tune in on Facebook and uh, it's, I fr uh, I'm going to find the Facebook link real quick um, because I just feel like that'd be nice for the people listening at home, like afterwards, yeah. uh, facebook.com slash Anthony Cheem live. That is the Facebook page and we are live every week, Thursday at 2 p.m. Eastern time. And uh, come join us. And next week, we're going to talk about that uh, those those tips on building vision, on yes. on achieving your goals, and getting closer to that that ideal life of yours. Oh, so that's what, that's one of my favorite subjects, by the way. I love talking about that. Awesome, great time. I'm excited <laughs> to hear about it. I'm excited to hear great. about it. This was an amazing great. episode. Any last words, Anthony? Live with love, man. Just uh, honestly, uh, I'll leave with this quote: "There's no wisdom unless it is wisdom lived." And there's no wisdom lived unless it is accompanied by love.